colonic endometriosis is a relatively uncommon presentation of a disease state, yet may be a common part of endometriosis-focused practices. When complete excision of disease is desired, it may be removed with shave techniques, sutured or stable disc excisions, or bisegmental resection. While the case this video comes from was complex and had many elements, the purpose of this video is to demonstrate technique for disc excision of colonic endometriosis with sutured repair. This case involves a mid-30s woman with high-grade endometriosis. As we come into this video, we've already completed a hysterectomy, a left salpingophorectomy, and extensive resection of endometriosis. We see superficial invasive endometriosis of the bowel at the transition between the rectum and the vagina, and also another lesion more proximally in the distal sigmoid. The sigmoid lesion is somewhat subtle, but one can see a kinking in the bowel that is commonly seen in invasive bowel wall endometriosis. Furthermore, when feeling between the two instruments using visual proprioception and visual tactile sensation, one can feel that there is a very hard nodule within the wall of the bowel. This lesion was not preoperatively diagnosed as it is high enough that it typically will not show up on an MRI and also cannot be felt on rectovaginal exam. It appears to be in the anterior wall of the bowel and small enough in size that we believe we can remove it with a disc excision with double layer suture repair technique. It is generally our preference to advance an EEA sizer underneath the lesion before performing the disc excision, but one can see that the lesion is high enough that it is difficult to reach, and once we do reach, there is a stricture that prevents one from passing the sizer underneath the lesion. To initiate the disc excision, a suture is placed through the lesion and lifted up by the third arm. We then use the monopolar cutting electrode to fully excise the lesion. By visualizing the motion of the tissue in response to the instruments, one can see that there is a dense nodule in the anterior wall of the sigmoid. We use cutting current at 50 to 60 watts in order to fully excise the lesion. It is notable to see that we use electrocautery on the bowel without concern. As general gynecologists, we were often taught that to bovi the bowel was absolutely forbidden, but in fact, using cut current on the bowel is entirely safe as long as one repairs the defect, and in fact, general and colorectal surgeons do so frequently. With the lesion fully removed, one sees the full defect in the anterior sigmoid, which at times can seem intimidating, but in fact will come together quite nicely with proper suturing technique. One can see that by reopposing the distal and proximal segments of the anterior wall, one will create a wide lumen with an extended posterior wall. Notably, such a procedure could also be done with a stapler, but as we noticed, it was difficult to reach a stapler high enough to perform this procedure, and thus the performance of the suture technique. The suturing begins with placement of 3-0 silk sutures at 3 and 9 o'clock corners of the incision. The placement of these stay sutures allows us to orient the bowel transversely and ensure that we create a closure that is entirely perpendicular to the lumen of the bowel. With the left suture in the third arm and the right suture in the assist port, we now have the bowel oriented to begin our two-layer closure. The closure begins coming through the mucosa at 3 o'clock and then re-exiting from mucosa outwards just next to this. We elect to close the mucosa with a running layer of 3-0 vicral suture. It's important when using a running suture to make sure the suture comes in and out of the mucosa in a box-like fashion so that the tension on the suture does not constrict the final incision. Each suture is placed just in front of and then exiting just behind the last suture in an out-to-in then in-to-out fashion. As the suture is pulled tight, one starts to see a slow closure of the incision transversely. With each suture, we see a small amount of closure until we finally have the entire incision closed. A defect that looks perhaps too large to close, in fact, closes quite well when we take it in a step-by-step -step fashion. One can see that what starts as a side-to-side -side placement of the needle starts to become a more vertical placement of the needle as the incision starts to close.
as we near the opposite edge of the incision, it is very important to include the corner well so that we do not have any leak from the edge. And here we see the completed first layer of the closure. We now begin to create a second layer of imbricating sutures, this time using interrupted 2O silk. Each imbricating suture includes bowel serosa and muscularis on both sides of the incision, pulling tissue over the previous closure of mucosa and muscularis. With the final sutures being placed, one starts to see what looks like a fairly normal piece of bowel with healthy serosa to healthy serosa and a wide open lumen. A proctoscopy and air leak test was performed and it showed no leak. In any case such as this, this test is absolutely required as even with thorough suturing, a small leak may be present and if left unrepaired, fistula or abscess formation is highly likely.